Hi guys, welcome back. This is Match Hat episode 224, featuring a long overdue retrospective of Bullfrog Productions' Dungeon Keeper. Now, this is a game that debuted back in 1997 for DOS, quickly became a cult classic, and is enjoyed by countless players even today. It's a really wonderful and highly innovative game, as we'll see. Anyway, we've got a lot to cover, so without further ado, here is Dungeon Keeper. And here we go with a little game called Dungeon Keeper. Hell of a game, released in 1997 for DOS. As you can see, it was done by Bullfrog Productions, a team led by Peter Molyneux, a Fable fame. Uh, although, uh, Peter apparently wasn't very happy with this game. I saw some comments about it where he uh, was kind of disappointed by the way this turned out. I'm not really sure why, because it became a cult classic. Of course, he would go on to create Black and White, which was inspired largely by this project. So basically what this game is, is they take the old computer role-playing game concept of the hero or party of adventurers going into the dungeons, and defeating all the monsters, gathering loot, and eventually defeating the evil wizard. Uh, you actually get to play that evil wizard in this game. It's a very dark, sinister, hilarious game. A lot of dark humor here. Uh, it's just a totally kick-ass game. If you played something like Orcs Must Die, Dungeon Defenders, that sort of thing, it's, uh, you know, I would compare it to that kind of experience, but definitely a little bit more gruesome and more focused on the uh, real-time strategy components. A lot of character, a lot of personality. It's just a game that, <laughs> frankly, I should have reviewed this a long, long time ago. I had to show you this, this intro in its entirety. I just love that music and the scenario they put together here. And I don't know if it's just me, there seems to be a little riffing here to Diablo, which came out around the same time. Maybe that's just coincidence. I don't know. It'd be pretty cool if it was, though. Alright, so let's get into this thing. So you can get this from GOG.com, $5.99. I'll put a link in the show notes. But It's really easy to get this up and running. There's no hassle, no, uh, no issues whatsoever. Flower hat. Polite bartering has led to extreme compassion and a surfeit of contentment in this area. Not even a thick-skinned troll could survive the understanding and help these scummy people can provide. Yes, that amazing voice work. I really love that. That is uh, Richard Ridings, by the way. He's a British actor. He's done. He's probably best known for these games, but he also did some uh, voice work in the show Red Dwarf, one of my favorites. And... Also, uh, what was the other one? Uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit? The movie. <laughs> kind of random. All right, so I started off here. I think this is the fourth town. The first few levels are really basic tutorial stuff, so I thought you would like to see a little bit later in, but uh, just keep that in mind. If this seems a little overwhelming at first, uh, there'll be plenty of opportunities to learn the ropes as you go. Okay, so when you first start, you've got these helpful imps here. And these little guys are your ultimate lackeys. You can literally slap them around. It's a lot of fun. But you need these guys to dig out walls for you, rooms. Also fortify the walls to keep the good guys from breaking into your dungeon. So it's a pretty straightforward interface here. Uh, the first thing I need to do is get some uh, gold. But even though these imps are finding gold, I don't get to use it until they brought it into my treasure room. Now this particular map set me up with some crystals. I don't know if you saw that earlier, but I'm going to have all of the gold I could ever want and so much more uh, thanks to those crystals. Okay, you control this game with the mouse and the arrow keys. You can hold down the control keys. If you hold the shift key down and press on one of your guys, you can actually enter this first person mode. It's just totally amazing that you can do that. Yeah, 1997, this is amazing. Okay, I'm looking around, trying to find out some more some more of the rooms. I'm also going to need to set up a, a, a lair for my monsters. Before you can get any monsters, they need to have a place to rest. That's what I'm doing there. It'll take my imps a while to get over here. I also need to set up my, my hatchery, which will grow chickens for the monsters to eat. And chickens are pretty hilarious, too. You know, it's little touches like that that I think make this game so, so memorable. 
if you pay attention to the monster animations too, you'll see a lot of little fun things that surprise you that they're even in there. A lot of nice touches. Also a training room so my monsters can level up. And eventually a library to attract some more locks, learn some spells, and a workshop. So a lot of stuff to do here. Lots of, it's a pretty sophisticated game when you really get into it. You definitely want to make sure you have enough room for these uh, these training rooms and layers and everything to expand as you get more monsters. Especially on this level. <laughs> it got telling me I needed a bigger treasure room. I don't think I ever got that thing big enough. So put some thought into it. Now you see these little that little sign there with those bars. Uh, that shows me the health of the room, the capacity, the green bar, and the white bar is the efficiency. To get the most efficiency you need to have all the tiles connected on all sides. Uh, sometimes you just can't do that. The, there's lots of uh, uh, rock that you can't break through, so you'll be constricted sometimes. So that's part of the strategy, though, thinking about how to optimize your efficiency. This awesome music sound effects, by the way, are the work of Russell Shaw. He also did the music on Syndicate, Populous, Black and White, Fable, <laughs> Theme Park. I guess him and uh, Peter have been together for quite a while. Really good work on this game, too. It's pretty easy to keep yourself oriented, too, with this very handy mini-map on the top left corner. Those light red splotches are the uh, plots that have something on it, in this case the treasure room. Uh, the darker red ones are empty plots, so I need to put some more treasure tiles there to my, expand my treasure room. And then those dark gray borders are the walls that the imps have uh, reinforced. See, they look a little bit different than the other walls. That's going to be important when the good guys show up. You don't want them to be able to come through anywhere. That's what those that reinforcement's all about. Now, I'm using the default AI here, but the, there are settings if you want the computer to do more work for you. Apparently, you can even get the computer to play the game for you 100%. Although, why the hell you'd want to do that, I don't know. You can also look at the map to see the areas where there's more gold or the impassable terrain. That flashing, colorful flashing dot there is the portal. Once I connect that to the rest of my dungeon, I'll start to get monsters coming in. Yeah, that's, that's what you want in this game. Uh, the monsters are on your side. So just finishing up my setup here, and then we'll see what kind of monsters we recruit. One thing I think the designers on this game really just nailed is they've got just the right amount of concentration needed to play. So you don't feel overwhelmed or feel like it's just too much stuff going on. Uh, on the other hand, there's always plenty of stuff to keep yourself busy, so you'll definitely notice the time slipping away from you as you play this. <laughs> I think I started this about uh, 10 o'clock this morning and didn't even look at a clock until about four hours later. It's definitely engrossing stuff. All right, so I'm laying down my layer tiles. Once I do that, uh, you'll start to see some, probably some bugs coming in here, some little amphibious looking guys. You can build different types of rooms to attract more powerful monsters. An entrance has been claimed. Now I'm putting down the, the eggs there for my chickens. It's what the monsters eat. Funny little chickens, another nice touch. I'm sure that's something that everybody who plays this game will remember quite fondly. <laughs> the fun you can have with the chickens. And another thing too are the, the sound effects. You know when you play that, plunk down those tiles, you really get a satisfying sort of thump, 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 thump. You know, and believe it or not, it's those little little touches like that that really make it feel more solid, a lot more fun. I played a lot of, uh, you know, lesser games that tried to imitate models like this, but they you know, usually they'll be lacking in those little bitty touches that you pretty much have to be a master designer to even be aware of. You know, it's not all just how great the graphics are. It's those little touches. So there's my roach. You can pick these guys up and take a closer look at them or pick them up and move them around. And that adds a really nice arcade-like element to it once the battles get going. You know, you, can, you have a lot more direct control over this uh, world than you might think. For example, if you get tired of watching the imps pick up your gold, you can just pick it up yourself and drop it right into your treasure room. So, lots of fun little touches like that. Again, plenty of ways to keep yourself busy. <laughs> You're not going to be bored playing this. 
And I think now's a good time to start putting down my training room. Now the monsters will come in here, or I can pick them up and drop them in this room, and for a certain amount of gold, they will level up, get more powerful, be able to fight off the adventurers much better. A lot of these rooms, the bigger you make them, uh, the better off you are, too. Certain features won't kick in until it's big enough. Now, you see some of those tiles around there haven't been claimed yet. So I need to drop in some, some of my imps, hopefully, and they'll get to work on that. There we go. You also notice that red fire going all around the zone there. The That lets you know, well, you know, the borders of the zone, but also how well it's doing. The flames, the higher the flames go, uh, the better the room is. You know what's even cooler is when you level up the monsters, they don't just get more powerful, they actually get new abilities. So when you take them over first person control, you actually get to use their abilities. That's just really cool, it gives you another incentive to uh, keep everybody leveled up. Okay, I still need to build a library, and once I get that built, I should start recruiting some warlocks. Once those guys come in, they'll start to research some spells. Yes, you also get spells you can cast on your monsters, speed them up, heal them, all kinds of cool stuff. You shouldn't be you know, getting attacked anytime soon, so let's go ahead and drop some critters here in the training room. <laughs> there we go. So those little numbers rising up are the costs. The little stars, or some like icons that pop up over the monsters, the number in the middle is the level. And then those, those little petals are basically their health. If all those petals go away, your creature is dead. Alright, I'm going to drop a bunch of imps in here. Come on, guys. I think this is taking so long because I keep dragging the gold they're finding into that treasure room. I guess it's a pretty good problem to have, right, guys? Uh, too much treasure? Definitely a better problem than not enough. You know one thing this game does, too? They really give you... A good feeling, a good sense of what it would be like to actually be that evil sorcerer. The, you know, the guy running this dungeon. I mean, the stuff you can do to the minions, slap them around, torture them, and so on. And uh, just take direct possession of them. You know, when you get tired of uh, watching them mess around, just uh, take control of their brain. So you notice I've got two options here on this guy. I can use uh, my pickaxe. I think number two is a basic attack. I can just tear up this wall myself, claim the tiles. Just take direct control. I can use that mini-map there in the top left corner, too, to keep myself oriented. Uh, there's one weird thing about this, though. The mouse up and down is reverse. So if you go up, you look down. If you go down, you look up. You know, you can change that in the settings, but I, I'm kind of curious. I don't really know why they did it that way. All right, so that sped things up quite nicely. Well, let's skip forward a bit and take a look at this library. So here we go with the library. Same process as before. They do recommend that you put the library off to itself somewhere. Hopefully I haven't gotten too close to that training room down there. It could be kind of noisy. You want these warlocks to be to have a nice quiet place to read dungeons and desktops. You can also use that, again, use that map in the top left corner. You can see the flashing spots are where I've got the tiles. It's really handy because it's easy to miss a tile sometimes, but not if you just keep your eye on that. Also, that you probably noticed that flashing dotted line on the map. Uh, that's showing the connection to the dungeon heart, or the heart of the dungeon. Basically, if the good guys get in here and attack that heart, uh, the game is over. So you definitely want to keep that well protected. So it's telling me that I can build a workshop now. Once I get the workshop built, I can recruit some trolls, and they'll come in and build doors and traps. So, yet another dimension. And you can see all of those, look at all those squares that aren't even filled in yet, so... There's a, quite a ways to go before you'll be at the end of this one. So I'll skip forward a bit and show you what the workshop looks like. And again, once I get this built, I can hi hire some trolls to come in here, put them to work, building doors and traps. Not sure why they chose trolls for that job. I think they would have gone with a goblin, maybe, or gremlins or something, but eh, what the heck, maybe uh, Peter Molyneux just likes to be different. Alright, so it's telling me I've pretty much got everything ready, just need to make sure i got enough monsters, have them leveled up high enough, and we can go see what's up uh, north of us. Definitely something up there. 
probably the enemy lord and or a rival dungeon master, dungeon keeper, uh, that I need to squash. Let's uh, skip forward a bit and take a look at that. You definitely don't want to explore too far or too fast. Start encountering the those uh, adventurers before you're ready. So you're probably better off just taking your time, not not getting in too big of a rush. All right, I got my imps into this new area now. You'll notice they'll start to get in here and start climbing the tiles. But I have to be careful because there probably will be some enemies up there. See those uh, that lava there? I'll need to build my bridge to get across that. Also keeps them from coming over. So let's see how this workshop is going. Maybe I need to put some more trolls to work there. Your that creatures are under attack. Creature at the very bottom is you the troll. A treasure room. <laughs> that treasure room. <laughs> so I think there are some archers. Yes. There's some archers across there that I need to dispatch. So I'll go ahead and put the bridge tiles down. And then uh, these archers will probably come across. And then I can take care of them with my monsters. Let's see what happens there. Let me go ahead and pick up some some monsters. Have them ready. Yeah, here they come. Grab some of those guys, some of these guys, and then just pop them right there on my land. And we get our battle. See my warlocks throwing their fireballs. Other creatures are fighting melee style. And we win. <laughs> quite, quite cool. Quite exciting. All right, so there is a closed door up there. So I'll need to get a, probably a warlock to help me out. Maybe an imp, you who's ever handy. Get in there and get those doors open and explore the rest of this dungeon. You need a bigger One thing about the these wizards though, they move quite slowly, so you probably want to hit him with a speed up spell before you take possession. All right, here we go. I think I'm going the wrong way. Okay, turn around. And then we'll just go up to this door and see if we can get it open. Tear through it. it is payday. Ah, that looks cool. You know, it just wouldn't have been as cool if you couldn't get in here like this and see it through the, the rat's eye, so to speak. The graphics, you know, it's 1997 technology here, so a lot of this stuff gets pretty bad when you get up close to it, but usually it's at least clear enough for you to see what's going on. Obviously, that's an archer. Throwing fireballs at him. Ooh, he's doing some, some damage to the old Hyboshek there. Okay, got him. Nice and gruesome death. So now I should have that new area open and the imp should get over you there and start collecting all the fallen treasure. Which I totally don't need. Creatures are under attack. Uh oh, where is this happening? You know, I guess later on you'd really want to make a nice winding passage to your dungeon heart. Make sure you got lots of traps and stuff in the way. These guys are pretty tough. Maybe I should throw some of these beetles at them, too. You also have a spell you can heal your, your guys if you're quick enough with it. You don't have mana, you just have gold, so maybe that'd be a good way to spend some of that near-infinite supply of wealth. Alright. I'm gonna go ahead and put some more of these warlocks through training. Level 1 warlocks don't seem to do very well. All right, let's skip on ahead then and see what the end of this dungeon is going to look like. All right, so I think I found the last bastion. The enemy dungeon heart has to be through here. Beware yep, the there it is. Uh oh, let's... To rid the world of your evil. Okay. Your creatures are under attack. So this looks like the battle royale. Now I can't just pick up my monsters and drop them on his territory. Let me get this imp out of them. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. And get him out of harm's way. Uh, so I need to try to think about where these guys are heading. Make sure I've got some nice hungry monsters there to welcome them to the dungeon experience. All right, where to put them? Probably that hallway there. Your creatures are under attack. Okay, time to grab some monsters. Hopefully they've uh, leveled up enough to take on these guys. <laughs> Let me put some more behind them. You always wonder why, when you go into a dungeon in a role-playing game, the monsters always come in these nice, easily dispatched waves, sometimes even one at a time. <laughs> It'd be a totally different scenario if you got rushed by every creature in the dungeon right when you walked in. 
Alright. Some more archers. You can even do cool stuff later on, like take take these guys prisoner, torture them, and turn them into vampires or worse. There's just so much to enjoy here. Okay, that looks like the enemy lord there. Let's get some more troops there. How about some bugs? Check some of these guys, move them a little closer. Uh oh. Try to heal them up. That guy's probably going down. Yeah, creatures are under attack. Alright, alright. Let's get some more. Plenty more where that came from. There we go. There we go. Oh, look at all that gold. Okay, so now all I have to do is finish off that dungeon heart. Well, and all I have to say, I'm really impressed with this game. Lots of fun to play. Even all these years later. There are, are of course, a lot of sequels, spin-offs, different versions, including an iPad version of this. Not really sure how faithful those other games are, though. If you're familiar with the series, I'd really appreciate it if you would leave some comments about the other games. What you'd recommend. What you would not recommend. But, six bucks? You know, how can you go wrong with this? So again, I'll put the link in the show notes for you there at forgog.com. Use my link. You'll be supporting the show at no additional charge to you, so thank you very much. Your creatures are falling in battle. A door has been manufactured. Conquer this realm. And that's all for this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Remember, if you want to pick up a copy of Dungeon Keeper, you can do so at GOGGoodOldGames.com. It's about six bucks, uh, $5.99, I believe. And if you use the link in the show notes, that will go to my affiliate page. So you'll be supporting the show at no extra cost to you. Plus, if you get that GOG version, remember, there's no DRM to worry about. You have all the manuals, the uh, artworks, uh, just a lot of great stuff. And it's, it's easy to set up. Just one click and you're good to go. You don't have to fiddle around with DOSBox, which can be really intimidating if you don't know what you're doing. Anyway, uh, what else? Oh, yes. If you uh, have supported this show, I thank you very, very, very much. Remember, if you'd like to support this show or uh, contribute to the conversations about it, uh, just go to matchhat.us. got the blog site there. You can download uh, co episodes of the show, interact with me on the forums, or uh, make suggestions, whatever you would like to see. All right, what about that ale of the week? Uh, well, uh, this week I've got a little number called the Sasquatch. Little Jizz Sasquatch Stout. Nice image of the Sasquatch there. Explore your darkest side. When it's time to relax, one stout stands clear. If you've got the beast, we've got the beer. <laughs> Brewed behind the Cheddar Curtain. I guess that means uh, Black River Falls, Wisconsin. Uh, let's see, Little Jizz Sasquatch Stout. Oh, 7% alcohol by volume, so uh, definitely on up there. I think the old Budweiser has something like 5%, so... Oh, it should be, indeed be fairly stout. Anyway, really looking forward to this, so let's get it open and see what it's all about. All right, so I've got some of this Lil' Just Sasquatch Stout here in the rather excellent drinking horn. I'm not really sure what a Sasquatch is supposed to taste like, but I guess we'll see. I've been smelling it, so... You know, it smells like any fine stout. You get a lot of coffee, chocolate, a bit of a cherry uh, aroma to this. Quite nice. Anyway, let's give it a taste. <laughs> Hmm. Definitely get some bitterness with this one. Um, it's sort of balanced, though, by that sort of sweet cherry-like flavor. A lot of coffee, a lot of a chocolate, sort of a dark chocolate-like taste to this. If you like coffee, chocolate, and cherries, it's, I don't see how you can go wrong with this. A little bit of that sort of uh, uh, peanut taste, too. Anyway, let's give it another taste. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, it's not gonna, I'm not going to say this is the best stout I've ever had, but it's definitely quite pleasant. I like the, you know, it's just bitter enough before it gets to be unpleasant. You've got that uh, cherry in there to balance it out. I'll give it a, one more taste. 
You know, considering it's got 7% alcohol, you really don't taste that at all. You just get those sort of nice coffee, chocolate, and cherry flavors in here. Ah, uh, drinking horns. I'm going to go four out of five drinking horns on this one. It's uh, quite nice if you're looking for a good stout. Uh, you definitely can do a lot worse than the Sasquatch. But anyway, uh, four out of five drinking horns. I'll recommend it. Not the best stout I've ever had. All right, let's wrap this up with a quotation. And the quotation I found comes from Winston Churchill. And it goes something like this. Without tradition, art is like a flock of sheep without a shepherd. Without innovation, art is a corpse. See you guys next week. Well, what about the nickname I had at school? What, Bonehead? <laughs> How did you know my nickname was Bonehead? I was only guessing. I didn't mean that. I, I meant the other one. What other one? Ace. <laughs> Get out of town. Your nickname was never Ace. Maybe Ace Hole. <laughs> it was my nickname at school, actually. It's just no one ever called me it, despite how many times I let them beat me up. <laughs>